So what happened in Alberta last night? Despite much shock and outrage on social media, the results of yesterday's provincial election were not actually as surprising as they might seem on first glance. I mean, yes, it's true that the Conservative Party was voted out of power in Alberta for the first time in 43 years, but this isn't because Albertans had some overnight change of heart. The roots are a lot deeper. We sometimes get into this mentality in politics that because one place elects one party for a very long period of time, everyone in that place must support that party. But despite the fact that Albertans have consistently elected conservative governments since 1971, the Liberal and NDP parties have always won a fair share of the popular vote there, particularly in the big cities and some of the suburban areas. For instance, in the 1997 provincial election, the combined centre-left vote was 40%. In the 2001 provincial election, the combined centre-left vote was 35%. In 2004, it was 40%. In 2008, it was 35%. In yesterday's election, the figure was 44%. 40% for the NDP and 4% for the Liberal Party. So the left did well, but not amazingly better than usual. Now in 2012, things were a little bit different, and the combined centre-left only got 20% of the popular vote. But that election was unusual for two reasons. One, the Conservative Premier of the time, Alison Redford, self-identified as a progressive and put a lot of effort into winning the votes of the centre-left, as well as courting traditionally left-of-centre communities such as organised labour. Two, Redford's actions, as well as her generally big spending approach to government, angered the right and led to the rise of the further right Wild Rose Party. 2012 was thus very much a battle between a conservative premier in name only and an insurgent right-wing party that many on the left were absolutely terrified of seeing in power. So 2012 was an unusual year born from unusual circumstances and you can probably miss a lot of the big picture if you read too much into it. Premier Redford, incidentally, proved to be spectacularly corrupt in office and resigned in shame last year, badly damaging her party's numbers in the process. The Conservative Premier that replaced her, Jim Prentice, was more conservative, but continued to fear, rightly as it would turn out, the ongoing threat posed by the Wild Rose Party. Last Christmas, Premier Prentice tried to instigate a merger of the Conservative Party and the Wild Rose Party, but this ended up having the opposite impact of what was intended and merely strengthened the resolve of Wild Rose supporters who felt that the Conservative Party was weak and desperate and power hungry. In yesterday's election, Premier Prentice was thus caught in a horrible trap. He had a strong challenger on the right, and he could not count on any support from the left. Plus, he had to deal with growing public displeasure over all the things his government had actually done, not only the scandals, but the fact that he had also recently introduced a budget that either raised taxes too high or didn't raise them high enough, depending on where you sat. And then there was the whole global crash in oil prices, which hurt the oil-centric Alberta economy in a number of ways and left a lot of voters looking for a political scapegoat. Last night, Alberta elected an NDP majority government, despite the fact that the majority of Albertans voted for center-right parties. The right-wing vote was badly split, while the 40% of Albertans who traditionally vote left can consolidated their support around the NDP and their unusually competent leader, Rachel Notley. Alberta is a conservative province overall, but like everywhere else in Canada, it does have plenty of progressives and a political system that awards decisive parliamentary majorities on the basis of relatively narrow victories. So that's what happened yesterday.